Hi, sweet pea. You'll never guess where I am. I'm upstairs in the bathroom, and no, I'm not using it. I want to read a book to you. And this is the quietest room in the house. The birds are downstairs. They're out of their cage. They're getting into trouble. I can't deal with their noise. So that's why I'm upstairs. And I've got my book with me. The book is called The Hidden House. It's by Martin Waddell and Angela Barrett. It's beautiful. And if I remember correctly, a good friend gave this to me. She picked it up at a library sale, and she knew I would love the house in the book. Maybe you will, too. I already love it. It looks like the windows might be dirty, might be covered with vines. I bet it's awesome inside there. What do you think? Let's find out, okay? Yeah, there we go. This was a book that originally belonged to the Hennepin County Library. They decided to withdraw it. The Hidden House. Oh, I love it already. Like that little cat. It's wonderful. In a little house, down a little lane, lived an old man. His name was Bruno. He was very lonely in the little house. So he made wooden dolls to keep him company. He made three of them. The one in the sweater is Winokur. The one in the pale gown is Maisie, and the one with the spade is Ralph. They sat on Bruno's window ledge and watched him working in his garden, growing potatoes and cabbages and parsnips and beans. Can you see the different vegetables in this drawing? These are the cabbages. There are the parsnips. They kind of look like carrots a little bit, don't they? And up here are the beans. I think cabbages look awesome in a garden. They're one of my favorite vegetables to grow. And what's that? Looks like some little maybe cabbage beetles. Hmm. Bruno talked to them sometimes, but not very much. They were wooden dolls and they couldn't talk back and Bruno wasn't stupid. The dolls didn't talk, but I think they were happy. One day, Bruno went away and didn't come back. Everything changed slowly. Wild things covered the lane and climbed all over Bruno's fence. Brambles choked the garden. And Ivy crept in through the window of the little house and spread about inside. A pale tree grew in the kitchen. Oh! That's a room in the house that I would love. Oh, isn't it cool? Can you imagine a tree in your kitchen? Ah, oh, look right there. It looks like a toad on the windowsill. That's probably just a little knickknack, you think? Like these guys, whoopsie, like these guys up here, the teapot and stuff. That's probably just something fancy that Bruno put on his windowsill. But how cool would it be if a toad had come in and taken up residence? I love toads, love them. Maisie and Ralph and Winokur watched it happen from their window ledge and they got dusty. 
They watched and watched until the spiders spun up their window so that there was nothing left to see but webs. They didn't say anything because they were wooden dolls. But I think they were lonely. A mouse came by and nibbled Ralph's spade. A beetle lived in Maisie's basket for a day and then it went away. An ant explored Winnaker but didn't find anything. Slowly, very slowly, it took years and years and years, Bruno's little house disappeared in the middle of green things. It was still there, but nobody could see it. The house was hidden. And Maisie and Ralph and Winnaker were hidden inside it. I think they were watching. There was a lot to see in the hidden house. The house filled up with ants and beetles, mice and toads and creepy crawlies, until it was fuller than it had ever been. Bees buzzed up the chimney where the smoke used to be. The little house grew warm and smelly with decay, but it was full of things happening. Maisie and Ralph and Winnaker got damp and mildewed and turned a bit green, but I don't think they minded too much. There is a lot of things happening in this house, aren't there? Do you see right here? There is a tiny mouse curled up on that cushion. There's bugs crawling on the walls. The ivy came in from outside and is growing up it. Then a man came down the lane and found the little house by poking his way in through the branches. He didn't spot Maisie and Ralph and Winnaker because they were hidden in the ivy. He liked the little house. The next day he came again with his wife and daughter and they explored the house and the garden and liked it very much. They said they'd come back, but a long time went by and they didn't come. The hidden house had been forgotten again and I think the wooden dolls were sad. A whole winter passed and the house was covered in snow. Lots of things came in from the wood and hid there, away from the cold. Like probably that cat, right? But it was nice and warm inside the little hidden house. And who's in the window? There are the dolls watching the winter go by. Then in the spring, the man came back with his wife and his little girl, and he brought a big axe. He cleared away the wildness around the little house. The man and his wife and the little girl cleaned and cleared and hammered and nailed and painted and washed and brushed until everything was lovely. The cat, I think that's the cat that came in in the winter, don't you? Had kittens. How many do you see? I see one, two, three, four, and oh, look up there on the ladder. Five. Do you see any more? That's a lot of kittens. And oh my goodness, look how wonderful the little house looks now. It took them a little bit because those kittens, they've grown up, haven't they? And I think I see one on the stairs. It's beautiful there. Oh. What a happy house now, huh? And 
what a happy family. Those kittens really have grown, and I think the little girl has too. The little girl found Maisie and Ralph and Winnegar. She got her paintbrush and painted them. Then she set them on the window ledge, looking out at the garden. The garden was filled with flowers. There you are, said the little girl, a whole new world to look at. A whole new family for them to look after, said the woman. Our family, said the man, and he hugged his wife and his daughter. Maisie and Ralph and Winnaker didn't say a thing. They couldn't. They were wooden dolls. But now they had a whole family to live with. And I think they were happy again. Hmm. <laughs> they look happy, don't they? What an awesome book. Oh, and I love when this happens. We get to find out about the author, Martin Waddell, and the illustrator, Angela Barrett. And about Martin Waddell, see, there's this picture. It says that he knew at the age of 17 that he wanted to be a writer. And since that time, he's written 70 books. 70. That's awesome. And Angela Barrett... She was born in England. She has many hobbies, including dressmaking and stage design. And she lives in London with a cat and a canary. Just like I live here with a cat and two cockatiels and a tarantula and two hens and a rooster and I'm sure there's some other things that I'm just not remembering right now. There's a lot of pets here. That's why I like it. And I could use a tree in my kitchen. Did you like this book? I loved it. And I'm really grateful that it was given to me. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk again soon. And, and until then, here's a kiss to catch. Okay? You ready? <sighs> catch it. Good job. It was awesome.